I'm not a woman. Whatever. You are now listening to Guy Doing Girl. Welcome back to Glow Live Radio, powered by Live 365. We are about to get into some guy doing girl talk. So for any of you listeners who don't know what this is, guy doing girl talk is a topic chosen by you all, and we discuss what you guys want us to discuss. So that's what that is. (laughs) If you would like to send a topic for us to discuss, uh, please visit the website at www.com. Radio.com and send your topic under the contact page. Um, today's topic, I'm off, I, and I apologize for this because yeah. I completely forgot who sent this topic. I'm so sorry, but if you hear this, this is your topic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the topic was, uh, the topic is, what's your thoughts of be, uh, befriending your ex boyfriend or girlfriend? That's a question, I guess. What is your thoughts of befriending your ex-boyfriend or girlfriend? Well, I have already done that. <laughs> and I it's been good. Like, I mean, it's been tough at first. But now, like, I don't know. It, it's, it has to be, a, you know, a mutual thing. I have a question, and this may be a bad question for me to ask right now. Did we dis- did we discuss this before? Yeah, we did discuss this. Yeah, we've had this conversation. Was, I think it was but it if was, it was all right if you if were, you were, were your friends with still your friends ex. with your ex. Okay, so this is like a like, part two. So this is like okay, that's why I'm having yeah. a deja vu moment. Got mm-hmm. you. And I'm like, mm-hmm. wait, this, yeah. this was the thing. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because I was like, yeah, no, about it's, to ask it, too. it's similar. I don't think it's exactly the same, but yeah. Okay, so whoever submitted this. This is why you should be listening to the station <laughs> because <laughs> had you heard this, we wouldn't be having this no, topic no, no, this, again today. This no, person wants part two. I'm, That's I'm, what's happening. I'm joking. I'm joking. I apologize <laughs> for whoever sent that. But part two, I get. Um, well, if you missed, if you missed it the first time, I don't feel like it's an issue for you to befriend your ex boyfriend or girlfriend. I, if anything, I, I'm mostly cool with my exes Mm -hmm. if we're not cool it's because we lost contact with each other or we just had like a very bad falling a breakup or something like that Mm so other than that i I don't see any issues with it at all not can i'm actually going to spin this around if you're in a relationship and you're cool with your ex do you if you're in a relationship, how can I word this? Mm, I, I see. Is it is it okay for you to hang out with your it's ex? Tough. Yeah, like alone, like just you and your ex. I think that's so hard. That just depends on how much communication you have with the yeah, new person. Yeah, I, I, I thought and... you were gonna say, is it okay to still just be friends with your ex when you're in a new relationship? But now you said just to be alone together. Well, well hanging out like, like alone. <laughs> like that's like one that's even thing. more it's difficult. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, hanging out alone with that person. Yeah. 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 Is it okay for that to be a I thing? Think like it has to be like maybe some time. So like say you just m- met somebody and you're like, hey, I'm really good friends with my ex. Like I hang out with her every Friday, yada, yada. Maybe you don't hang out with her every Friday for a while. You're starting to get to know them. But mm-hmm. once you really get to know them, they can trust you. Maybe they even meet your ex, you know, and then maybe then it's better. But like, I think you have to feel that out. Yeah. It's a tough and, one. And I think, I think that would probably be pretty intimidating for the new person you're mm, in a relationship with because they don't know, they don't know exactly, <laughs> From experience, they don't is. know exactly what your, what your previous relationship is like now. Mm-hmm. So in the interest of like letting everybody kind of figure out where they're at, you might want to put a pause on hanging out with the other person so long as they're, they mm-hmm. understand why you're doing exactly. that. And that takes that takes the communication on the other side of that's, being that's friends all with three your of ex. you would like, have to be talking yeah. about it and go, look, I, I need to have mm-hmm. some time. I'm in this new relationship, but it's kind of, I'm sure you understand a little weird because we did date. Yep. So I'm going to spend some more time with, with her yep. until we know, you know, See, if this is going somewhere, because yeah. if, if it's like, yeah, this isn't going anywhere anyway, it doesn't matter. Exactly. My but you don't ex, want to think that you've yeah. got a, a, a backup, you know, Absolutely. boyfriend, my, girlfriend it, on hold while you're in a new relationship. And sometimes that happens. But my yeah. ex and I actually have like a, a thing where we're like, okay, once you're serious with someone or you're getting serious with someone, just let's communicate that. So that way we can, you know, set boundaries. And if we are all together, we're not saying something that might potentially trigger that new person 
because like you have a bond with with that person you know probably longer and most people can see it so it's gonna it can definitely be tricky but any new relationship it's gonna have to have that time to kind of grow on its own exactly so like let me ask you this whenever you were first dating someone mm-hmm. how long is it before you introduce them to like either your close friends or closest friends <sighs> or family is there a waiting period usually there needs to be because <laughs> yes. i used to not be you- like used to do it pretty quickly but uh-huh. now as i'm getting older I almost take like three months. Like I really have to know this person before I introduce them to family. And what what about friends. you, Cowboy? I'm going to actually agree with that. You, you had like, like a little bit months. of a waiting period. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And yeah, I mean, because... they can give and take on time, but three months is usually. So I think healthy. I think this is. Sorry, I think this is kind of an offshoot of of what we had before, but I think it's I think it's still relevant, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, because right. this is this is what it would actually work like, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. So guess, what were you? I, I didn't mean to no, to jump on what you were saying. Sorry. Oh, it's on me now. <laughs> what you got? What you got? No, I could say um, I I could have used this advice earlier as far as um, you know not remaining friend. This was not an ex. This was not an ex. This was just a friend of an opposite sex. Uh huh. Like me and her were like very good friends. Yeah. And close. I jumped into like a relationship, and I didn't like postpone or like slow down whatever was going on with that friendship and it kind of sort of interjected with what was going on with that relationship it became like a huge issue with that relationship and at me being young I just I brushed it off like I don't know there's nothing going on here you're just overreacting whatever but the person that you're a friend with though may have had it in her mind that maybe that might turn into something else even though you were just friends with her at the time she or had just she had someone just oh she had someone yeah she had someone yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, I don't know. That it, it's a hard thing to do. Is it kind of like like a brother sister type thing? You know, that's what like it was. very protective, very like, you know. That's what it was. Like that's... I know him. Like don't hurt him. Like mm-hmm. th- those kind of things. Yeah. See, but I think it's just a good idea to have a waiting period in any relationship mm-hmm. before you start introducing them to mm-hmm. other people because you don't know where this is going. Right. So yeah. until we know, are we serious? Are we just do we like each other mm-hmm. really? Um, are we planning a future together? Those are some pretty big questions. Mm -hmm. Before you start introducing them to the rest of your circle, your friends or family, because, I mean, that's a lot to ask people to invest in as well. I mean, obviously, the the family and your friends are going to support you or try to. Mm -hmm. But if you're like, hey, I don't really know about this person, but I'm going to bring them with me and stuff that we're doing, it's like, okay, but... Especially if your friends are still kind of getting over the last relationship you just had, Oh, God, that's true, too. And they also have to, you know, going back to being friends with your ex, like, sometimes it's hard for friends to accept that you're still friends with them because they, you know, they've seen you probably from a hurt place or they don't agree with that person, think, you, you know, you can do better, all this stuff. So sometimes they're, like, worse off towards your ex than even you are. So that's also a whole nother. Well, a hard, a hard thing for know, me personally in, after a post breakup is not just the individual. It's also their friends and uh, family that you right. that you got close with. Mm-hmm. So that's another reason why, you know, I think personally it's a good idea to have that time to just relax and date mm-hmm. before you start introducing and mm-hmm. inviting and everything. It's not anything to do with being rude to the person that you're, that you're dating. Mm-hmm. It's more about. I don't want there to be any confusion or anything. Yeah. If if this turns out not working out, I'm going to introduce you and then oh no, this is or or especially yeah. especially since I'm older than you guys, I mean it happened a lot with with like parents, right? Mm-hmm. And if parents have broken up and they're trying to get out there and yeah. date and they're like, <laughs> oh my gosh, last thing you want is to start introducing, hey, here's your new uncle, here's your yeah. new aunt. And then it doesn't last. It's like, don't do that to the kid. Yep. All right. They, they need to have, <laughs> you need to keep these things separate. Let them develop if it's going to be something real. I mean, I I married into my family, into, into my children. Mm-hmm. And part of that, my wife had a few months to where she's like, I'm not even going to introduce you mm-hmm. guys because we don't know what this is. And I think, yeah. I mean, it kind of stung a little bit, but I also absolutely understood why. Yeah, you It just makes sense. You don't want to do that to the kid. Out. You, you, you got to realize that's more important than you. Or the mm-hmm. person you're dating. I have a family member who, she's better about it now, but like as soon as she would meet somebody, she would want them to meet me because mm-hmm. she's like, you know, she's cool. Like I, she's got a really good sense of people. But then I was like getting close to these people. Yeah. And yeah. I was becoming friends with them and then they would fall out within a few weeks or months or even a year or so. And then it's like, like super bummed, super bummed out about it. So now she actually will wait 
a few months before even telling me she's talking to anybody. Half the mm. time I know like when it doesn't work out versus but, it's, it's healthier. I, and I think it makes sense, but I also think it relates to this this actual same question because it doesn't matter if it's a close friend or an ex or a family member. When when you're dating somebody new, I don't think you want to to push those kind of two worlds together. Right. But if you're single and you're still friends with your mm -hmm. ex, I mean, what difference does it make? Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. That's where I'm at too. But I know, like, getting back in the dating scene, it's so hard because it's like, yeah. they're like, oh, so what do you? Do? Oh, well, I just hung out with my ex. But I mean, we've been broken up for two years. So do you still call them an ex after a year? Do you call them a friend? Is it lying? Well, one like one, it gets tricky. One question I would think would be the immediate next question is, yeah, but are they with somebody now? No. Oh, and I can answer no, but like, <laughs> so, I feel like they have been. Let's like, feel like we've been separated for a while. But that's what I'm still, saying. There, there have been close. relationships yeah. since that time. Mm -hmm. It's not like you broke up and then neither one of you dated anybody. You're still single and you're still hanging well, out. Well, I didn't haven't dated anybody, but it's anybody's here. She has. So it, it that's. But then I just use that to my advantage. Be like, yeah, she did her own thing. I did my own thing. We came back as friends, and that's where we're at. So. Yeah. That's well, that, and that plus most the passage of time. Of time it doesn't work out in the lesbian world. I can already tell you guys. It's considered a red flag. To that you have a friend? No, I have lots of no, friends. No, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't face. mean that the way that... I did not mean that the way that came out. I meant that you have a friend that you used to date. I just cut myself off, so it sounded insulting. That was not meant... I, uh, I assume you have lots of friends, all right? You're a tremendous person, Best of Becca. That is not what I meant. God almighty, I stepped Whoa. in another bear trap. All right, Whoa. look. I can't breathe right now. Um. Oh, her face was everything. She said, what? Excuse me? Basically. The point <laughs> is your other friends giving you grief about still being friends with your I have, ex. Yeah. There, I is have that better? Does I that have a, yeah, I have a couple that are like that, too, and that's a whole nother thing. Is being like, look, she's not a horrible person. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'd still enjoy. It. She's no nothing more or less than you. <laughs> like, right. But that's one of the things I had to instill in in both of my boys as they were growing up. Is like, look, sometimes it's not going to work out. That doesn't mean that either one of you is a bad person. Mm -hmm. It could just be a bad fit. And yeah. as long as you have like a healthy kind of respect for each mm -hmm. other and a breakup, then that's it. Yeah, and that's just that's honestly, it's kind of been one of my best decisions so far as being friends with her. Like, we just. We get each other we help each other out like it's there's boundaries there's solid communication like i mean it's comfortable i tried to date a really good friend of mine in high school but we were so close that it actually wound up being weird if we uh -huh. tried to be kind of more yeah. romantic and yeah. i was like yeah this yeah. isn't one of those relationships mm -hmm. so it wound up being better for us to just be friends we yeah. were always yeah. like that we're Absolutely. happier being friends and i think that's just something i wish we could kind of make the norm is understanding that so like what are our relationships are they a friend are they colleague bases are they right you know family are they closer like like really distinguishing like oh well okay the, a, a romantic relationship did not work out but a platonic friendship that's that's where we're happy or are we happy or separated like i think you just have to like decide where your relationships actually work and how they work versus would you consider that person your ex? If they're like, if you're like better off as friends, like we, if you started off as friends and it didn't work out, would you consider that person your ex at all? I part, I wouldn't mm. honestly, because I didn't get anything of the out out of this. Like we were better off as friends, so I'm I think just, it just depends, like your time and you if know, you your if bond. Because like my ex, like we were together, together. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. we, you know, we were really together, um, and then we split up. And we actually didn't talk for like eight months and then we came back. We're like, Dude, like, we miss each other. Like, we just want to meet each other's lives, but we know like a relationship right. is just not right on the table. But I see, I, I can see how that would be intimidating to a new person yeah. in your life mm -hmm. and be like, wait a minute, you guys actually dated? You're not just friends? Yeah. And, and they're, they're like, like, okay, oh, is now, this we have, have to, now we yeah. have to have that conversation. And the next question is, but would y'all ever get back together? And it's like, <sighs> Oh, God, I mean, that question. No, like, no, we're friends. It depends yeah, on if you had it, a conversation and, and you both had agreed, no, we're closing the book mm -hmm. on this and that's done. And obviously it didn't work, but I value you so much as a friend. I don't want to mm -hmm. risk it by trying to date again. Right. We're being honest, being like, well, actually it is open, but, you know, we're also open to other people. But, I mean, that, that's tricky, though. But whatever the whatever the case, mm -hmm. so long as you're up front with that, that lets yeah. the other person know, hey, <clears throat> there's a possibility this could be something. Yep. That yeah. way they can make it's the best decision the for them. Yeah, it's all about the communication, too. Well, either either way, you'd have to be honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you owe that to somebody. Even if it's not working, you would, well, 
especially if it's not working, you owe it to be honest with them saying this isn't working because yeah. you're wasting that other person's time, not just yours. But it, right. But there's some good things to being friends with your ex, but just especially because they can, they do know you. So if you mm -hmm. are getting in something new, like they could be, you know, a, a good perspective and, you know. I think it's always good yeah. to have somebody that really knows you to be a sounding board for anything. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. All right. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're about to get into some more of today's hottest music. Once again, you're listening to Glow Live Radio, powered by Live 365.